Hello and welcome back to the ninth video tutorial in this 10 part video tutorial series on creating an e-commerce site using Drupal 7 and Ubercart. I am P.D. Worski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal, and like all other video tutorials in this series, this is brought to you between myself and in collaboration with the Ubercart.org team. Uh, so following up on the previous video tutorials, we've gone ahead and created our site. We're getting pretty close to having it finished and launched, but there's still a few things we need to cover, and those include setting up product kits, looking at stock notifications, and then in this video tutorial, Hopefully, without running too long, we'll look at actually creating an order, uh, creating an order, and checking out the actual uh, product or order status workflow. So, with that, let's dive right into it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is take a look at setting up product kits. Now, if you're not familiar with product kits, essentially what they are um, is an item on your store that will pull in different Ubercart products that you've already created. So you can purchase two products and get a discount uh, and specify that specific discount for your customers. Um, I'll show you that in a quick second, but just briefly, you know, when we go to store, configuration, products, we can go to product kit settings and we can set the default from when we're creating a product kit. Uh, the three different options are uh, essentially you can create a unit and not list the components when you're checking out, or you can create a unit list the components when you're checking out, um, or just put all the kits in as individual products and let people take them out as they want to. Uh, so we're going to leave it as a unit and people can see the products that they're ordering. Now to add a product kit to our site, we're going to go to content, add content, product kit. And just briefly when we do this, remember uh, we had set up our specific URLs when we went to search uh, metadata, URL aliases, patterns. We set these up for product kits as well. So when you create this, if you don't have the proper looking URL down here in the path auto settings, uh, you can go back over there and change that up. So we're going to call this the uh, super saver. Um, and this will be, um, you know, buy two products uh, and save big. I don't know. Create a proper description um, based upon what you're actually creating. But uh, again, for this video tutorial, we're not going to do that. And as always, we're going to put Bailey up on our site. So we'll leave this as the default settings. And what they're going to get, uh, any customer that purchases this is going to get our Drupal book and our Drupal t-shirt. Um, so we don't have to change the list settings. Now the shipping settings. Um, interestingly, this doesn't have the checkbox for make product shippable. Uh, so you'll see when I save this, I will get an error. Uh, and I'll explain that to you when we go through that. But beyond that, I mean, we can add some SEO tags, uh, but the rest of this should all kind of be set up. And we're going to leave this promoted to the front page so that we can see it. So now we've got our image up there. Let's go ahead and we'll save and continue. Here's our error that I was talking about. Uh, what this comes up as is it's usually related to an undefined variable. And so looking at line 134 of the uh, of this module code for UPS, it just relates to uh, the form settings, whether or not uh, shippable was set. And because shippable isn't uh, enabled for product kit, it looks like we're getting that error. So um, if you ran into something like this, this would be a good time to post an issue on uh, Ubercart's um, um, maintenance page on uh, drupal.org. Uh, I haven't gone over to check to see. This might be, you know, already addressed or already pointed out, that kind of thing. But anyways, it won't affect us. But just so you know, if you're doing this and you get that, that's that's the issue. Um, the reason why we went save and continue is because we have the opportunity to apply our discounts here. So, um, you know, if we bought these two individual items, um, our total would be 109. But, you know, we want to add a heavy discount here for users who do this. Uh, so we'll make it $70. And again, if we save and continue, and then we scroll down, we can see that that discount is applied to the both products. Not necessarily evenly, but uh, we can change that up if we'd like to. Um, and actually, it looks like it's probably a percentage of uh, their costs, so it would have been applied evenly. Um, obviously, you can change around uh, the quantity, the, the discounts if you want to, uh, but now we can go over and preview. And of course, we're getting tons of errors, not necessarily a good thing. We don't really need to preview, I meant we could go to view. So here when we're viewing the product, we see $70. Uh, the two products that we're specifically getting here, the image for our product, uh, and then we had an attribute on the awesome book, so we can do that as well. So we can go to yellow, uh, and now if we added this to our cart, you see here we get $70, got the color yellow, and our two products are listed. So that's creating a product kit. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, uh, pretty easy to do, uh, and it's a nice convenient uh, way for you to add products uh, to your site for users, um, obviously so they don't have to purchase individually. 
So from that, um, pretty basic for those. Now we're going to take a look at stock notifications. So just briefly, we'll step into Pete's awesome product here. And actually, I'm sorry, before we do that, we're going to go to store configuration and we're going to go to stock notifications. And so this is just the default setting for the stock notification system itself. Uh, so we're going to send an email whenever stock levels reach a certain threshold item because I want to maintain my stock level, so I want to know that. Uh, and then I can customize the subject that I would get in the text. Uh, so pretty basic, not too uh, complicated. Um, we'll save those configurations. And now if we go to our content, we can actually enable stock notifications for a specific product. So what we were going to look at was Pete's awesome product, I think. Um, and we'll edit this. And when we edit the product, you'll see we have the tab for stock. So we'll go ahead, check stock. This would typically be unchecked, but we'll go ahead and check that off. And then we would uh, add our stock here. So I've, you see I've already created an order and that's why I'm at minus two. But let's go, uh, I have 100 in stock and my threshold is 10. When I have 10 left, I'll get an email that says you're getting low. So I save those configurations. We view the product, nothing changes here for the product, for the customer, anything. They have no idea what your stock levels are at and Ubercart by default will allow customers to continuously purchase the item regardless of the stock level. Um, this can be a good or bad thing for you. Um, you know, if you're dealing with physical products, you could have something that's back ordered and customer, you know, you don't really want them to know it, but you still want the product, but you never really know when it's gonna ship. Again, you can create some issues there. If you're looking for a solution where customers can't purchase if there's no stock, there is this module, which is the out of stock module. And this will replace the add to cart button with an out of stock message. The good thing about this is customers now can't order products that are out of stock. The bad thing about this is you don't know if somebody's trying to order a product that's out of stock, so you're not really sure what your demand is. Nonetheless, I'll briefly show you here, I've installed the module and give you an idea of kind of what we're looking at. So let's go down to uh, our Ubercart Extra, out of stock notif uh, notifications, and we will enable this. I'll close this other module, or other tab. Now when I go back to my product, you'll see uh, we have 100 in stock, so Customer knows that. And if you are a stock, let's put this at zero, save the changes, go back to our home page, see an out of stock message. That out of stock message is actually customizable in the configuration for out of stock notifier, or notification, sorry. Uh, and we can display the throbber, which is kind of annoying, so we'll take that out. We don't have to display the stock information, so customers won't see that. But we see here what they're going to actually see. And this is dependent upon our HTML here. So this is by default filtered. So if you save that, you would see this full thing. I turned it to full so we get the red. Uh, but you can put that as to whatever. Go ahead and save the configuration. And there we go. So if we go back to our home page, see out of stock. And we've removed the actual notification for. Um, for the throbber and for the actual stock level, but we don't see that because we're out of stock anyways. So that's that module. Uh, again, positives, uh, negatives to both, it really depends on what your preference is. Uh, so that's product kits and that is stock notification. Um, that's typically it for the Drupal setup uh, with Ubercart. Um, so now this kind of wrapping things up, what we'll take a look at is actually creating an order and walking through the order status, just so you're aware of kind of how that works and some of the options that we have. Uh, but that will be it for the tutorial. So let's go ahead and we'll do that by going back to our products. And let's, I think we've already added this to the cart, but we'll go ahead and add it to the cart. So we're gonna buy two of these, right? We have the $5 in, uh, just as a point of reference, we have the $5, which adds an actual uh, $5, sorry, we had the, Color attribute black, which adds a $5 charge to our product. So you see that's $75 as opposed to 70. The yellow we um, doesn't have an increase. So we'll go ahead and check out. And if you remember, well, we're getting some issues here with our uh, out of stock. So maybe the module isn't as great as I recommended. Again, use it at your own risk. I apologize for that. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll 
check out here. And this is all set up on my sandbox site, so I'm going to check out with that. Again, I would recommend that you be in your sandbox site just to make sure that your order statuses uh, work and you can check out. So we're reviewing our order. Everything looks good. I'm shipping to Hollywood. Go ahead and submit that order. And now, again, I have my sandbox uh, customer ID. And this was set up in one of the previous video tutorials, so uh, hopefully you followed along the entire series. You know what I'm talking about there. But I can um, check out here. And I can go to pay now. And just briefly, um, again, you get an idea of here, um, the specific product items rather than having the product kits listed. So if we had changed that and we had just listed product kits, uh, it wouldn't be the individual products here. So we can go ahead and pay now. And we've just completed our order, so we'll go ahead and return back to the site. So uh, we can now go to our orders, check them out. And we'll see here the newest one at 145 is completed. The reason why it's completed is because the products that we had weren't actual shippable products. Uh, we didn't set those up to be uh, shipped by UPS or anything. So as a result, um, if we go to our order status here, um, we'll see that you know we got the payment, uh, or sorry, the order was created, we got the payment, and boom, it ends up being completed. Uh, so not much going on there. We could send uh, you know an order comment and then send that update uh, to the customer himself or herself, uh, and that would be it. And again, you can take a quickly look at the log here, and it shows you how this proceeded through our system. Now that's all great uh, for the one product that you know isn't shippable, it's all available online like your product rolls or a downloadable product. But if you have a shippable product there's going to be another process that you're going to go through. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to my content and I think super awesome t-shirt. Nope. So t-shirt with Bailey's photo. This is an actual shippable product, so we'll go ahead and we'll add this to the cart. We'll check out, and we're going to choose one Main Street. My billing address is the same as my delivery. We've got our shipping options here, so we'll keep it at $15. We'll go to Review. We'll submit the order. We'll enter our password. We'll pay now. And when we return back to the store, we can actually go to store orders and you'll see here we have uh, payment received. We're not actually completed. The reason for that is because this is a shippable product that we actually have to package and then ship. So the next step here if you're administering a site like this is you would go to your packages and we'll make a package. So this is going to be in package one. Make the package. Right. So there we go. Now we go to shipments. We're going to ship it manually. And so doing that, we have the saved address, the origin address from us, the destination where it's going to the customer, the packages, right? So we obviously have one. And so we can enter a product, uh, package type if we wanted to here. And the declared value, again, if you wanted to. If you had a tracking number, so you're using UPS, you can manually enter that in. Again, weight in pounds, uh, all this information that can be included. Now the shipment data, again because we're doing this manually, we'd be entering this in uh, for whoever our shipping was. You know, Perhaps we're using Pure later and we don't have that installed on our site. So we go ahead and do that. Expected delivery is going to be, we'll say, the 31st. Shipping cost is uh, you know, $10. We'll save the shipment. Um, but we can also go and then print the packing slip. right? And if we check out the log, we see that nothing, we see that here we don't have the actual completed uh, or anything beyond um, pending, right? Or sorry, payment received. So now if we go back, what we can do here is now we can go to a completed and we can add an order comment and say uh, order shipped October 27th, tracking number is, oops. And then we would enter our tracking number. Make sure to send an email update to the customer. And our order has been updated. Now we see that here, order comments, order shipped. We see that the customer is notified. Uh, and then when we go and actually check our store orders, 
So the one thing here is we went from uh, the order being payment received to the order being completed, but we, you know, we're just shipping it right now. We don't really know if the customer got it. So we might want to indicate that uh, there's a step between there where we're actually shipping. So if we went to store configuration and went to orders workflow, we'll see here we have the order statuses, right? We can go ahead and add a custom one and we'll say um, shipping, so shipping. And this is uh, payment received. So we'll go ahead and create this. And now we see that we have payment received here. So now what we can do is we can go back to our orders themselves. Look at this. And it's not completed, it's actually shipping. So if we update this, we go back to our orders. We now see that this is shipping, right? Once we get confirmation that it's been delivered from our carrier and we know that we're good, we can come back in here and then add it as completed. Uh, so again, it's just a, it's a minor thing. It's totally up to you. You could also add another status that says you know it's packaged because we know that during the day maybe we have a, a you know a pickup every second day or something along those lines. So we could have it sitting in our warehouse that's packaged not actually shipped, so you could add that as well as an intermediary step, uh, but uh, options for you to customize. So that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, in the last video tutorial, what we'll do is wrap everything up. I'll show you how to take it to a production site, which isn't very complicated. It's, it's pretty much just our, our UPS and our PayPal that we need to change over, but we'd also wanna walk through an anonymous user uh, purchase uh, and a few other things. So again, if these are helpful, leave a comment, let me know, uh, but hopefully we'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thanks very much.